open our word of God in the uh, four Moses number number twenty one. Verses starting from six to nine. Numbers 21, 6 to 9. So the Lord sent fiery serpents among the people, and they beat the people, and many of the people of Israel died. Therefore the people came to Moses and said, We have sinned, for we have spoken against the Lord and against you. Pray to the Lord that he take away the serpents from us. So Moses prayed for the people. Then the Lord said to Moses, Make a fiery serpent and set it on a pole. And it shall be that everyone who is bitten, when he looks at it, shall life. So Moses made the, a bronze serpent and put it on a pole. And so it was, if a serpent had bitten anyone, when he looked at the bronze serpent, he lied. So we see that was sufficient to trust the word of God and look at the serpent to be healed. It was simple and easy. Next in place, Isaiah 30. Isaiah 30, verse 15. For thus says the Lord, God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest, you shall be saved. In quietness and confidence, shall be your trench, but you would not. So here is again the same thing. It's sufficient to trust the Lord and be in confidence to be saved. In confidence to the Lord. Very simple and very easy. Next place. Isaiah 45, 45, verse 22. Isaiah 45, verse 22. Look to me and be saved, all you ends of the earth. For I am God, and there is no other. So it's very easy to look on the Lord. It's no need to do anything, no good things to do, no good deeds, nothing but trust and look to be saved. Very simple and very easy. That verse is famous because maybe you heard about Charles Spurgeon. He was in 1850 converted by the Lord with using that verse. So he understood that it is sufficient for him 
to look on the Lord and to be saved. Nothing to do. Nothing to have in confidence in myself, but only in the Lord. Next place is a, a dia dialogue between our Lord and the very important person in Israel, Nicodem. It's a John verse 3. Gospel according to John, uh, chapter 3, uh, starting from verse 12. So, our Lord presented previously that Nicodem, that person should be born, born again. So, as we have nothing to do with our burning again, uh, burning as a child, that was impossible for me to manage anything when I was born from my mother. It is also the same story with burning, burning again. It's impossible to manage anything with that from ourselves. Only our mother and our father uh, from the flesh has something to do with our first birth, and only God has to do with our second birth. So it's a miracle, a God miracle, not our action. And next, our Lord said, if I have told you earthly things, because Bird is an earthly thing. And you do not believe. How will you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, that is the Son of Man who is in heaven. And as Moses lifted up the serpent, in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation that the light has come into the world. And men loved darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone practicing evil hates the light, and does not come to the light, lest his deeds should be exposed, but he who does the truth comes to the light that his deeds may be clearly seen that they have been done in God. So our God knows everything about us. He knows what we are, how badly we are from our very beginning. So it's easy to confess our sin to whom he knows everything about us. Maybe it's 
hardly to confess my sin to person who don't know that, for example, I, I did something bad for that person. But it is not with the God. God knows everything. God knows and expects that we confess him our sins. And he promised that if we confess, we will be in his light. And that is easy and very simple. Next part is from the same chapter, chapter verses 33. He who has received his testimony has certified that God is true. For he whom God has sent speaks the word of God. For God does not give the Spirit by measure. The Father loves the Son and has given all things into his hand. He who believes in the Son has everlasting life, and he who does not believe the Son shall not see life. <coughs> but the wrath of God abides on him. So we see here that everyone who trusts in Jesus has everlasting life. Everyone who confessed his sin to God has peace with God, has everlasting life. But unfortunately, there is another group of people who didn't confess who didn't believe, and they are on the, their own way to hell. Next is from Gospel according to Luca. Luke 23, starting from verse 39. Luke 23, 39. Then one of the criminals who were hanged blasphemed him, saying, If you are the Christ, save yourself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Do you not even fear God? saying you are under the same condemnation and we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deed. But he, this man has done nothing wrong. Then he said to Jesus, Lord, remember me when you come into your kingdom. And Jesus said to him, Assuredly, I say to you, Today you will be with me in paradise. Now it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Then the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was torn in two. And when Jesus had cried out with a loud voice, he said, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. Having said, said this, he greeted his last. So we see here two criminals on the right and left hands of our saviors during they were hanged on the cross. And we know from another testimony that both of them blasphemed him. So they both were criminals and they both were Christ's enemies. But here, something 
knew is in one of the criminals. He take the lesson. He understood that it's sufficient to look at Jesus, to trust Jesus, and it is sufficient. If he mentioned in the kingdom of God about the criminal to be saved, so he asked to the Lord Jesus, mention, it's very easy and very simple. And he done that, done this. So it was sure that the same day he will be in the paradise with God. And it is the first person who was in the paradise. It is a very nice information for us. If such criminal who never done anything good was in paradise basing on this that he trusts and look on the Lord, so it is the same story with us. It's easy and simple to be saved. Next, Romans chapter 3. Romans chapter 3, starting from verse 27. Where is boasting then? It is excluded. By what law of works? <coughs> no, but by the law of faith. Therefore, we conclude that a man is justified by faith apart from the deeds of the law. Or is he the God of the Jews only? Is he not also the God of the Gentiles? Yes, of the Gentiles also. We here are all Gentiles. Probably we have no Jewish person here in the room. Since there is one God who will justify the circumcised by faith and the uncircumcised through faith. Do we then make void the law through faith? Certainly not. On the contrary, we establish the law. What then shall we say that Abraham, our father, has found according to the flesh? For if Abraham was justified by work, he has something to boast about, but not before God. For what does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. But to him who does not work, but believes on him, who justifies the ungodly, his fight is accounted for righteousness. Just as, just as David also describes the blessedness of the man to whom God imputes righteousness apart from works. So we have here the same lesson. There is no good works, no good works needed to be saved, but only trust to God. Nothing more. Just believing that cross of our Lord Jesus is sufficient for to be saved, to believe in him to be saved. Nothing more. Just believe in the Lord Jesus to be saved.
is very easy and simple. Next, we have First John First John chapter one. First letter, first epistle of John, chapter 1, starting from verse 5. This is the message which we have heard from him and declare to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we say that we have fellowship with him, and walk in darkness, we lie, and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his Son, cleanses us from all sin, if we say that we have no sin. We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. If we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar and his word is not in us. So again we see here it's a promise of God that if we confess to him our sins, he is faithful and just, and he will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all righteousness. That is easy because God knows that sin, we should confess him. It's nothing complicated. It's just easy, very easy, simple. And what the lessons from that are for us? Open Hebrew, Hebrew 10. Hebrew chapter 10, verse 26. For if we sin willfully after we have received the knowledge of the truth, there no longer remains a sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful expectation of judgment and fearing indignation which will devour the adversaries. Anyone who has rejected Moses' law dies without mercy on the testimony of two or three witnesses. Of how much worse punishment do you suppose will he be true worthy, who has trampled the Son of God under foot? counted the blood of the covenant by which he was sanctified, a common thing, and insulted the spirit of grace. For we know him who said, Vengenense is mine, I will repay, says the Lord. And again, the Lord will judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. So we see that if we don't bring such very easy and very simple message to our neighbors, to our friends, to our enemies, to our colleagues, to our uh, unknown persons, they will go to hell. Here, the fire of the hell is forever. It's, it's not easy to uh, imagine how large and how great is a, 
uh, punishment of the hell, the terrors of hell. So it's not a joke, it's a true story. From us depends how many persons will hear that it's easy and simple to find the grace of our Lord. And last part of scripture is a Jude, Jude chapters 20 to, uh, verses 22 and 23. And on some have compassion, making distinction, but others save with fear, pulling them out of fire, hating even the garment defiled by the flesh. So we have a great responsibility to share the gospel with persons who we meet. Amen. brother has reminded us about the new life that we receive once we believe the gospel. And I'd like to add a few more verses in 1 Peter chapter 1 about that new life and how it is communicated to us. As he reminded us there, it is through the gospel, that that new life is communicated to us. First Peter <clears throat> chapter 1 and verse uh, 22, First Peter 1, 22, seeing that ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the Spirit, unto unfeigned love of the brethren. See that he love one another with a pure heart, fervently. Verse 23. Being born again. Notice, born again. Not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. The word of God. And so, the Lord told Nicodemus, you must be born of water and of the Spirit. We know the water, what it symbolizes, the Word of God. And in obeying the truth, believing the truth, the Word of God and the Spirit of God. The Word of God, we read, is quick and powerful. It abided forever. It's living. It's living. And it says, the word of the Lord endures forever. This and this is the word which by the gospel, notice, by the gospel is preached unto you. So, the Lord uses the word and the Spirit of God uses that to communicate that life, eternal life, that we're born again. Not like the natural birth, not of man, not of flesh, not of blood. All this is, con is connected with the natural birth, you know, flesh, blood, and so on. But it is the Spirit of God and the Word of God. Then turn to Second Timothy. Uh, chapter 1, 2 Timothy, chapter 1, and we want to read um, 
a verse or two there. Second uh, Timothy chapter 1, um, verse 9, for connection. Second Timothy 1, verse 9, speaking of God, who hath saved us and called us with a holy calling, not according to our works, as the brother mentioned, we're not justified by what? Works. Not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace. It's all the grace of God. Not because of what we could have done. He spoke about um, Mr. Spurgeon. Um, he went into that a church, and that man, I think, he was not so educated. And all he said, look unto me and be saved. Look unto me. And he was converted. He was converted. The Lord used a man that was not so much educated. So, but the word of God uh, reached there. By grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus. Before the world began, see God's thoughts concerning us, concerning eternal life, was even before the world, that he would give eternal life. It's there in Timothy. Um, God who had promised, verse 1, God who promised of life, which is in Christ Jesus. Before the world began, God promised to give man life. Now look at verse 10 of this very chapter, chapter 1, 10. But, a court, but is now made manifest by the appearing of our Lord, of our Savior, Jesus Christ, who had abolished death and had brought life and incorruptibility to light through the gospel. So that light, that new life that we receive, it is through the gospel. It is communicated through the gospel, the simple preaching of the gospel. You know, many say the gospel is foolishness. The, the Greeks wanted a sign. The, the Jews rather wanted a sign. And, um, and the Greeks said, you know, that's foolishness. But it's communicated through the gospel. Life and immortality. It's through the gospel that this life is communicated. And another verse or so that was referred to in John's epistle, and um, John's epistle, uh, chapter 5, we you know. John's epistle, chapter 5, and verse 18, it says there, we know, yes, this certainty. So many times you read in um, John's epistle, we know, we know, because of, because of faith. Verse 18, we know that whosoever is what? Born of God, see? New birth. Whosoever is born of God, born again. Second birth, born of God. Sin it not. That's the new nature that is communicated to the believer. That nature, being born of God, partakers of divine nature, sin it not, but he is begotten of God. See, we are born of God, born again. We are partakers of divine nature. And so this... Um, chapter, um, this epistle tells us so much about eternal life. In verse 5 of 13, it says, um, These things have I written unto you that believe, yes, believe uh, through faith, on the name of the Son of God, that he may know that he have eternal life. 
and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. And look at verse 11 here of this chapter 5. This is the record that God has given us eternal life again. And this life is in the Son. He that had the Son had life. And he that had not the Son of God has not life. So here is the new life which God gives through the Lord Jesus communicated by the Spirit of God and the Word of God through the Gospel, the simple Gospel that is being preached. And as we are being reminded, we are witnesses here for the Lord. And we should not um, take this for granted. We should look for every opportunity that we can. Our neighbors are looking at us. Our friends all around, they want to know. They can see that life which is manifested in us. Uh, it, it speaks to them. And we should be able to give a word as to, to say, yes, if you believe in the Lord Jesus, if you accept the word of God, you too can have that life. Like Nicodemus, who had come to the Lord Jesus, and the Lord says, well, you need to be born again. You know, he came with all these words about, we you know you're a teacher, and so on. And no man can, the Lord says, you must be born again. Right to the point. And Nicodemus uh, had to come to realize this. And then to know that uh, we, we have now this new nature, as the brother mentioned, we are now in the light. You see, we... We are passed from, 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 from darkness into light, and now we have to walk in the light. Walk in the light. Walk in the light where we are manifested, our deeds, everything is manifested in the light. God is light and love. And we cannot now uh, walk like we walk in the past because we have new life, new life in Christ. And God expects us to walk in the light, and then we have fellowship with God, fellowship one with another, if we walk in the light of His Word and in the light of His presence. Amen. Can close with a word of prayer. Our time is gone. Oh God and Father, we do thank Thee too for Thy Word, uh, which has been before us are so many scriptures reminding us of believing in the Lord Jesus, his work, believing in, the, in him as thy beloved son and in the work that he has accomplished. And by faith, all those who do so can receive eternal life, can receive new birth in Christ. And we're thankful for each and every one of us who have come to put our trust in him and to know him as our Savior and have received this life. We pray, too, that we would be witnesses for him, for thee, while we're here in this scene, so that others, too, would be drawn to the Lord Jesus and to receive new life before the day of judgment. Thank you again for bringing thy servant, our brother and his wife, and for the time they have spent with us, and even for this word of encouragement. We commit ourselves now and ask that would take us now to a home in peace and safety. We give thanks in that wonderful and precious name, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen.